smile and faces the family way. Margaret Lewin quilting will make your day. Hi, I'm Margaret Lewin and welcome to Margaret Lewin Quilting. Today I'm going to show you how I made this absolutely what I think is adorable advent calendar. I'm actually making a total of three of these because I have three children who have children. So I this is my second one. I got one more to go, but in the meantime, I wanted to pop on here for a minute and show you how I went about making this really cute advent calendar. I have got one of the cutest projects that I think I've done in a long time. This is a advent calendar and it is by Make Our UK and it is called the Festive Advent Calendar and it is just one of the cutest things I've seen in a long time. I'm going to move it so you can see all of the different pieces. Aren't they just adorable? I have gone ahead and quilted this. I wanted you to see it all quilted. The pattern didn't indicate to quilt it, so the pattern didn't call for the Annie Soft and Stable, but I wanted it to be really stable, so I did use that. I have quilted it on the long arm. Wait till you see the fabric in the back. This is the back backing fabric, and I'm also going to use it for the binding. I'll turn it all the way over so you can see it. Isn't that just adorable? I think it's one of the cutest backings for Christmas time I've ever seen. So I really liked it. So here is the front. I'm going to walk you through exactly how I did this because there's a couple of things that I did differently than what the instructions called for. And I think it's kind of important that um, I tell you the different things that I did because they are drastically different. So here is the panel. So they come in one full piece like this. This is attached to the bottom, so it comes as one great big piece. I took these when I cut it off and I backed it with a medium weight interfacing. It makes a world of difference when you're putting the project together. Believe me, it made a huge difference. Now, because when I quilted it number one on soft and stable, and because of the fact that I backed these with interfacing, when I go to line it up, it didn't line up perfectly. The directions tell you to take this, fold this over, and fold this one over, attach these two pieces on the ends, then make the blocks pleats and stitch all the way across. Did not work. I tried it, I had to take it out. And I think it's because I had quilted mine, and I think it made that much of a difference. So this is, I've already made this once in case you can't tell. So this is how I did it and it worked out perfectly. Worked out, I, it's just the cutest thing I've ever seen and I'd show it to you, but I left it at my daughter's. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna first take this over to the ironing board and I'm going to press this down just like this, okay? so that I'm just seeing this little bit of gold. There's a little gold strip. I'm gonna do that on both ends, okay? The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and I'm going to fold this over, just like this. Now remember, this piece is already folded, all right? And on this piece, I'm actually going to, after I've pressed it, I'm actually going to top stitch this down to keep it in place. I'm going to do the exact same thing on the top. Fold it over and I'm going to top stitch it down. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to the ironing table and I'm going to iron it. Then I'm going to take you over to my sewing machine and show you how I go about sewing it down. So I will see you in just a couple minutes over at my sewing table. Then I will show you exactly how I go about putting this down and you will see how quick and easy it really is to make. So see you at the sewing table. I'm going to first show you exactly how I'm going to set up my machine. Now I have a Bernina B790 and there's a couple of things that I want you to see. And the first one is I'm going to make sure that my presser foot, which is 8D, is programmed properly into the machine 
and I will what I'll do is just hit the presser foot and just go till I get to 8D and I will highlight that one so that the check mark turns green and then I'll just close out of that so I know I have the 8D I have a single needle in which is exactly what I have in my machine so the only thing I haven't done at this point in time I have checked my needle it is a single needle I've checked my presser foot I've got the right number of presser foot on so now I need to activate the dual feed which is actually called the Bernina dual feed so I'm just going to press on this lever and it's clicked right in you could hear it now to release it I'm going to press on it and it'll just pop right back up again so I'm going to first put it right back there the next thing I need to do is I need to top stitch this down this is the bottom of the calendar where the advent pockets go now we're going to do what's called box pleating on the pockets here I'll bring this through so you can see it see isn't it just adorable I'll show you the whole thing again in a few minutes but I have to put these pockets across my advent calendar so they're just going to go kind of like this I'll show you in a better from a better angle in a little bit but first thing I need to do is I need to sew these so that they stay down so that when I'm working with the calendar itself I don't have to worry about it slipping so I am just I've threaded my needles I'm going to bring it around and clip my thread because what the thread clipper does over here on the side it's over here is it actually clips it exactly right so that when you start sewing it doesn't get messed up in the bobbin case you know how sometimes that happens one of the things that Bernina has that I really like and I want to try to bring you around now to the front of the machine now that you've seen what I'm doing from the back I'm going to switch you around because now I want you to see what I'm doing with functions on the front of the machine to sew this there's a few things that I want you to see. There's a couple of buttons down in here that really mean a lot. This is actually your start button to actually start sewing. This is this green button right here. This button is the one that says start and stop, okay? This button just below it is the presser foot up and down and it has a little presser foot and an arrow on it. This one cuts your thread and this one is our reverse. Now we're actually going to be using every single one of those buttons. So now the next thing that I'm going to do is start actually sewing. I have my stitch length at 2.5. I've programmed in my presser foot. Now I just need to sew. One of the things now when it comes to the presser foot up or down one of the things that I can do this machine lets me program how far I want it to go up or down depending upon what I'm working on so if I'm working on something really really thick I can change it so that my presser foot weight raises even higher but on this one I'm dealing with just a plain item and I don't need it to come up any farther to do what I'm gonna do alright so now I'm all ready to sew I'm going to lower my presser foot and you can see I have it set so that I can still move this around there's a little bit of wiggle space I'm gonna tell it I'm ready to sew and I'm just gonna touch my presser foot and off I go I'm getting to the end I'm not going to worry about back stitching or locking my thread only because I know I have to sew over this again so I'm just going to tell it cut my thread and that's it it cut my thread so I'm going to turn it around and do the same thing on the other side this advent calendar just ends up being one of the cutest things and I'm gonna stitch. Oh, it did a lock stitch for me that time. I must have it programmed. Okay. 
Now, the directions tell you to stop sti top stitch one end of it, not both ends of it. I am top stitching both sides. I think it makes a huge difference by doing it that way. It made it much easier to work with when I was sewing it together. I've sewn, I've made a couple of these now. So it made it much, much easier. So now here is my one piece. The next thing I need to do is I need to sew, fold this over and sew this. Now these two longer pieces, I felt like it was necessary the two long pieces. I felt like it was necessary to press these. I found that with these two side pieces I really didn't need to. They weren't that big so I really just didn't have to. You can always stick a pin in them if you feel like that makes it a little bit easier. So on this one I'm going to stick a pin at the end. Can you see my pin? Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to bring it underneath my needle or underneath my presser foot. I'm going to engage for my presser foot to lower and now I can adjust it however I need to. I'm going to tell it to sew and then just use my presser foot. And Again, it locked the stitch for me so I don't need to worry about it coming close to the edge. And I am this time going to do a couple back stitches. Hold my button and then I'm going to tell it to cut my thread. Okay, we're going to do this one more time down here and then we're actually going to move on to our calendar and start putting it all together. It, I really think this thing is adorable. So hang on just a second. We're almost ready to start putting our little thing together. So here we go. I'm going to stitch again. And again, I am going to back stitch now. And then I'm going to tell it, go ahead and cut my thread. All right. And sometimes you may just get a little tail. And if you do, just go back and clip it off. No big deal. It's a pretty tiny tail. So here is my piece. So the next thing that we're doing is it is now time to add it to our calendar itself. So how I did it with mine was I found that... Sometimes I need a lot of pins and other times I didn't. Right. In the directions it tells you to sew down the two ends, both ends, and then it tells you to make box pleats. And box pleats are just a fancy name for how we do this. It's really simple. I'll show you how. And then to sew, and sew all the way across the bottom. Then after you've made the box pleats, sew on these dotted lines. Well, I found that that did not work. It just made it far too difficult trying to manipulate things around. So what I learned was that if I took and worked with it this in this way, I started with making, attaching my end pieces, just like the directions said. I'm going to start by attaching these. Then after I attached the end pieces... what I did was I made my way through stitching down the centers. Now to stitch down the centers you're going to line up the gold line right here in between your calendar days and the dotted line on the calendar pockets. So I'm just going to line these up and then I'm going to place a couple pins in them. And I'm just going to do a pin on each side, and that will keep them more than sturdy where I need them. No big deal. I'm going to do that all the way across. Then once I've done that, I'm going to stitch. So I'm just going to go and just stitch these down by stitching on those dotted lines. I am going to do back stitches because I feel like people are going to be putting pe things in these pockets and then taking them out again. So I feel it is necessary to backstitch on these. But I will be done lickety split because it's really easy to do these. It's a simple task. Then once I have done this, I'll show you how I sew them, but once I've done this, then what I'm going to do next is I am going to 
at that point make the box pleats and stitch it down so that the box pleats are then functioning. But I'm first doing this because I just think it's a little bit easier. I found that at the start and at the end I did need to put two pins in, one at the top and one at the bottom. But when I was working, and I'm sorry, I'm a little bit out of camera shot. I needed to put one here and here. But when I did the centers, I was fine just doing it like this. So here we go again. It's time to start sewing. And again, I'm using this slot in the 8D foot to add as, to use as my guide for where I'm stitching. So I am going to first start by lowering my presser foot and then I'm going to just manipulate it around and what I'm really trying to do is stitch pretty close to or on the line that I already stitched. So I'm going to tell it I'm ready to start. It's going to lock my thread and then it's going to stitch. I am doing an extra step and I am going to back stitch. I'll use my left hand. I'm going to back stitch and now I'm going to go ahead and stitch forward. All right. I can pause. I do have my needle down function going so that I can easily remove my pins before I get to them. And I'm just going to sew to the end. Again, I'm going to pull my pin out. Go all the way to my end. I'm going to do a little back stitch. Now I'm going to stitch forward and then I'm going to tell it go ahead and cut my thread. Okay, and it cut my thread. Now these are just a couple pieces I had before, so we'll clean that up. I'm going to keep doing that all the way down, lowering my presser foot. Then I can just move it to where I need it to be, and I'm going to tell it to sew. It'll do a lock stitch. I'm going to do a couple back stitches, and then we'll just keep right on going. So I will be back once I've done this part to show you how I go about making the box pleats. I'm telling you, they're really easy, okay? I'll try to sew one more time, and hopefully my, uh, my hand will not be in the way so that you can really see what I'm doing. Okay, I'm going to fold this down there. Now I think you can see. Going to do a little back stitch and now go forward. Simple, simple. Little back stitch, forward, cut my thread. Okay, I'll be back in just a few minutes. You can see I've made a couple box pleats. I'm going to show you how I did them. So, how I did this was very simple. How I did this was I take one of my pins and I'm going to fold it right where that gold line is. Can you see it? Let me see if I can pick it up. Let me see. See these gold lines? Right, 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 right. Right here. Those are our fold lines for our box pleats. For that fancy word. I'm taking it and I'm just folding it so that I can see that box pleat at the top or the gold line at the very top of my fold. I'm bringing it down. It matches up the black dotted line on my printed fabric. And then I'm going to put a pin in it. Alright. Next one, do the same thing. So I'm just going to fold it. And I fold it so that I can just see that gold. Sometimes it helps if you work with your stiletto. You guys know I like my stiletto and I use it a lot. But you can pick it up, then you can fold it, and then fold it right over like this. Alright. And then put a pin. Now, I do use some pretty sturdy pins. I try not to use my flower head pins because those are 
nice long ones, but they're great with working with single layers of fabric. They're not always great for using multiple layers, but I do like them when I'm working like with quilt blocks or garment sewing, anything like that. That's, you know, not st stiff, but because I've got the soft and stable in here, you can see I'm fighting with getting the pin through. Because I've got the soft and stable and I've got interfacing and all that stuff, it's a little tougher to, um, to work through. So don't be afraid to grab your stiletto and help you make your pleats. All right, so I'm just going to make another one. And again, I'm checking to make sure that this piece right here, this piece, has stayed flat because I don't want any any puckers or pleats or anything like that in my final piece. Whoop, here we go. Come on. Now all of a sudden I'm having a horrible time um, getting it to go through. Alright, there we go. Now I've got it. Alright, so I'm going to go off camera, finish the last couple, and then I'll come back and show you how I do go about sewing these down. Alright, so I've made all of my pleats. They're all made. The next thing that I am going to do is I'm just going to stitch down all the way across and what that will do is make my pockets. It'll be very easy to do. So I'm just going to rotate this and I like that I've got all this space over here because I can just roll this any way that makes it easy for me. I'm going to fold it under this time. And I can just line this right up. I'm going to put my presser foot down now. All right line it up so that I know I'm straight and then I'm going to tell it to sew. So here we go. I am going to do a little bit of a back stitch because this again is an important corner where there you know could be a lot of wear through the years. And when I get to where my pleats are I'm just going to keep right on sewing. Not stopping, just going to keep right on going. take longer to take the pins out than it does to sew. Very, very easy to do. See? And again, when I get to this corner, I'm going to back stitch. And come forward, and then I'm going to cut my thread. And that is it. I have stitched one of four rows. Look at how cute these little box pleats are. Stitched one of the four rows. I'll get the other four done and then we'll come back and we will work on the binding. I have I've changed the angle of the camera just a little bit, hoping that maybe it'll help you to see a little bit better. I've attached my binding. And what I'm going to be doing is just bringing it up and around and stitching it down. I'm going to top stitch it. I'm going to use white thread. I have a single needle. I still have my 8D foot in. I am still using my white thread because that's going to blend in really nicely to my background. And my stitch length is 2.5. And I'm just using a basic straight stitch that's it now I could do a decorative stitch but I kind of want I just just gonna use a basic straight stitch 
So what I'm going to use is, once again, I've shown you this spot in here a couple of times during this video. But what I'm going to be using is these this slot to line up. Now, if you want to go ahead and use Wonder Clips to hold it over, you're welcome to. I normally do start using just one Wonder Clip in the very beginning to kind of hold things over. If you find that you didn't stitch straight enough and you've got a place that the binding is too thick through here, the fabric of the piece you're working on, just go ahead and trim it. That's okay. You know, do what you need to do. That's fine. So I'm just going to hook my Wonder Clip on there and then I'm going to start stitching. And again, I'm going to be using these as my guide. So I'm going to first start by lowering my presser foot. And what I'm doing is I'm lining this edge of my binding right here. This edge up with the left edge of the channel on the 8D foot. That's what I'm using to line it up. And if it kind of rolls over a little bit, what I simply will do is do my presser foot up button. It'll come up and it just kind of hovers there. I can make my adjustment with my stiletto, put it back down, and just keep stitching. So here I am. I've got that piece down and I'm going to start sewing. do have my needle down function which you just saw happen which I think is it helps a lot when you're doing binding I like to especially during binding use my needle down and look at if I just hold my binding down with the stiletto it really does stay right in place so that it makes it easier for me to sew and I'm just gonna take it slow remember I'm top stitching and I want it to look nice when I'm done. So I'm just going to, okay, you can see what happened. I kind of got off a little bit. So I'm going to back stitch until I'm back on my fabric. Then I'm going to put my presser foot up. And I'm just going to pick this up, pull it over, put it back down again, and see it just perfectly caught it. Not a problem at all. So that was a, that's a really nice function that I'm using constantly, I'm finding. It's a new one for me. Now see what, ha what I just did there? Can you see I have this like fold up? Again, press her foot up, push it down, and now it's right back under there again. I'm going to show you how I do one corner. And then after that, I'll just finish it up on my own. And then show you what it looks like when it's all done. And I am going slow. But you know what? Might as well just go slow and do a nice job of it versus having to have to constantly take something out and put it back in. And That's just not fun. Here we go. I'm going to start making my corner now. And what I start to do to begin with is just bring my fabric around to the front and see which way my inside really wants to fold. It seems to want to fold that way. Okay. Now I'm going to bring this piece up and around. And I am going to put a wonder clip right there. Bring it around. wonder clip on that. Alright. Next I'm going to fold this over. See how I folded it? I made like made a diagonal line with it. Then I'm just going to pick it up and bring it over again. And see what that does? That makes my nice little corner. The other thing I want to tell you is look here. This is actually a corner that is a connecting seam. So it's a little bulkier, 
So I want to show you how nicely this machine goes right through that, plus how nicely that 8D foot works. Now remember, that 8D foot is normally a jeans foot. So um, it'll be nice to see how smoothly it goes through that. I'm going to move that wonder clip now. I'm going to smooth this down and smooth this down and hold it. And I'm just going to very slowly stitch up to that point. Oh, I think it did great. I'm right there. One more stitch. All right, so now I'm going to do my presser foot up. I'm going to rotate my piece. And I'm going to do my presser foot down. And I've done my corner. I'm going to start stitching. I'm going to back tack because I want to cut this and I want to show you how nicely that corner came out. There we go, nice and up close. See how nice that corner came out? And, and that is a seam, so to have a corner come out that nicely is really great. That makes me happy. All right, I will come on back and show you the entire thing when it's all done. All right, here is my what I think is adorable advent calendar. I got my binding on all the way around and it's just simply top stitch and I think it looks absolutely fine. Here are all my little pockets so that I can put little notes or little candies in every one of them for my grandchildren at Christmas time. I gotta press this one I think a little better. And when I go to press it, what I'm going to do is fold it just like this, and then I'll press it. And then that way it'll keep its nice box pleat. So isn't that just the cutest? I think it's adorable. I cannot wait till Christmas, and I can actually put little things in it. And then I'll show you the back. Here's the back print. And I think the back print is adorable. It's very busy, but I really like it. I think it's really cute. And the only thing I've got left to do is to stitch this down. So I'll take that in the house with me tonight and I will get it stitched down. So here is my advent calendar. I do have kits for these out on my website. Uh, my website is www.missmarkersquilts.com and I'll also stick a link to them below. So if you'd like to go get your calendar, you can. Now the kits come with the panel for the front and the backing fabric, which is enough fabric to make your binding, your hanging sleeve, and the um, backing fabric. If you're gonna have this quilted by a long armor, that's fine, but I think this is the perfect project to just sit down at your sewing machine and echo around these pieces. There's so many different details that you can pick up on in this panel just to do some free motion quilting that I think it would be a lot of fun to do. Plus, it's not a huge project, so that kind of helps too. Thank you so much for sticking around all the way to the end to see how I made my advent calendar. I really appreciate the fact that you were with me today. If you like this video and would like to see more like this, please do hit the thumbs up button. It really does help me to know what you like and what you want to see more of. And the other thing is, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do so. And thank you so much for being here. Have a great day and I'll see you again soon. Bye.